The indirect function is a very useful function when you are looking for data in different ranges or in different sheets. So how about I explain to you how this formula works and then we do an exercise where we're going to go into three sheets, 2020, 2021 and 2022 and get the sum of sales for the year based on an agent that we select. So here I can select the year, I can select the agent and based on this I need to have the sum of his sales. So let's start with the indirect formula. I have three cases to show you so you understand how it works. The most simple one is to write equal indirect, you open parenthesis, it has two arguments. One is the text and one is this mysterious A1, which is an optional argument, and I'm going to show you what it is. But for the text, I'm just going to put C2 in double quotation. Then if I do comma, either you can have it as a default as a C2 cell. If you choose false, you can do like the row and the column. But we're always going to use this format. So that's fine. I don't need this argument. I'm just going to close the parentheses and press enter. As you can see, I got subscribe. Why did I get this? Because I told the Excel that I want whatever is in cell C2. Give me the value and put it here. In case two, I'm going to do the same. But instead of putting the text in double quotation, I'm not going to do this and I'm going to refer to the cell directly. So here I'm going to do equal, indirect, open parenthesis, we're going to select C3, close parenthesis. So notice here I didn't put the double quotations. I type enter and then I get to the channel. Why? Because basically this indirect function got the content of cell C3, which becomes a text. So now it's D3 and then it will give me what's in D3. So if I go to formulas, evaluate formula, look at this. In this case, we do evaluate, we get D3 because I got the content of C3 in double quotation, and then I get the content of D3. In the first case, if I evaluate, I directly have C2 in double quotation. So when I press evaluate, I get subscribe. The last case is a bit more complex. So I'm going to do indirect, open parenthesis, I select my C4, close parenthesis, and I get high there. How did I get high there? Because here in C4, I have greet. I don't have D4. It's because my cell D4 is called greet. If you see, when I selected it, I called it greet. Whereas another cell, like for example, D2 is called D2. So what I did here, I just came and changed the name. If you go into the name manager under formula, you will see that there is something called greet and the value is high there. And then it refers to cell D4. And all of this is dynamic. So for example, if I go here and put an exclamation mark, this will automatically update. So indirect allows me to indirectly refer to a range or a cell. Let's see how to use it in our case. In our case, if you have, for example, three years like here and many agents for the years, you can use several if statements and then you can do a sum if on the agents. However, this is not efficient. And if you get, for example, four or five or six years, then it becomes very cumbersome. So what do we do in this case? First of all, I'm going to do a case where we just take it from 2020 and it's static. So what would I do? So I'm going to do sum if, what is my range? My range is this one, then comma. What is my criteria? My criteria is that it has to be the agent that is selected. And then the sum range, we're going to select this one. So I close the parenthesis and I have a normal sum if. The problem is that it doesn't adjust when you change the years. Obviously, if you change the agent, it will adjust. That's fine. So let's go back to agent one. So what I'm going to do is create a new table. And from this table, 
I'm going to use the indirect formula. So let me show you how it works. Basically, here you will have the criteria range and here the sum range. This is 2020, this is 2021, and this is 2022. For the first one, we already did it. We're going to just put it here, remove this parenthesis. Make sure that you add another apostrophe here, otherwise you might have a problem. We're just going to copy-paste this and put B here, and then copy-paste it. And copy paste it here. So here it's 2021, this is 2022, this is 2021, and this is 2022. And now what I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to do a couple of VLOOKUPs. So we're going to do equal VLOOKUP, open parenthesis, we're looking for 2020, in this table and then we want the second column which is this one and false so this is the first VLOOKUP I'm gonna call it V1 and then this is V2 I'm gonna do VLOOKUP the same thing the only difference now is that I want the third column so I want the sum range now that I have those I can replace what I have here with indirect so I can do indirect, then I select the range, and here I'm going to do indirect and select the range. And now if you see, if I change to 2021, I will get for agent 1, 158. For 2022, I'm going to get 119 which is the sum of those two numbers. And this is how the indirect formula will help you circumvent those problems. Now you can go one step further and not use the VLOOKUPs here, but have them in your main formula. So here I'm gonna do Control C, Escape, go to my formula, replace B12 with the VLOOKUP, Enter. Here I'm gonna do the same, Control C, Escape, I go replace the VLOOKUP and then enter and I don't need any more those VLOOKUPs. Now if I change agent and if I select 2020, I get 123. So please let me know what you think about the power of indirect formula in Excel. And note one thing, you should not use indirect a lot because if you have a lot of data and a lot of indirect formulas, it might slow down your Excel sheet. So be careful how you use it and only use it when necessary. And finally, as usual, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel.